In class, we have been talking about abstract data types. Today, we will extend this discussion by looking at stacks, which are a specific type of abstract data type. To investigate this idea, let us consider the following analogy. I have here some numbered balls, which will represent our data. You will notice that these balls are in numerical order from smallest to largest. Now I want to store this data. To represent that, I, the program, will be placing these balls or inputting the data in increasing order into a container, represented here. I, as the program, will store the data in the hidden container beginning with 1, adding 2, adding 3, and adding 4. With all of my data in the container, I will eventually need to retrieve the data. Before I retrieve the data, by pulling a ball from behind this wall, take a minute to predict which ball you think I will get. Okay. Let's retrieve our data. I have retrieved ball number two. For the second piece of data, I have retrieved number four, then number three, and finally, number one. Looking at this new arrangement of data, there appears to be no specific order to retrieval. This is likely due to the type of container I used. In this example, I use an open container with no formal structure. Since this container does not guarantee an order to the numbers, I cannot predict how my data will be retrieved. What if I wanted these items retrieved in a specific order? Perhaps I can achieve a specific order with a different type of container. Let's see. Again, I will place our four pieces of data into this container in order. Here's ball number one, ball number two, ball number three, and ball number four. Now, let's retrieve our data and see how our new container impacted things. I have retrieved ball number four, for the second piece of data, I have retrieved number 3, then number 2, and finally, number 1. Before I show the new container, take a minute to predict what you think the container will look like. In this example, I use a structured container with one open end which will force the balls to stack up on top of each other. In this container, elements are both added and removed from the same end. This stores data in what we call a stack. We use the term push when we store data in a stack. In the stack, I can push data into one end. When retrieving data from a stack, we use the term pop. Now, I have to pop data in this stack from the same end that I pushed it into, meaning that the last information I put in is what I will access first. This is also known as last in, first out, because the last element to be pushed in is the first one to be popped out. Stacks are very useful when storing data because we can reverse the order of some input, and this can be a building block in coming up with many solutions in computing science. In class, we will discuss many examples of how stacks can help us elegantly solve common problems.